Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Jeremiah 31, verse 7 is where we resume our study today. Get your Bible, open it up to Jeremiah chapter 31. And remember, the Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Go there and choose, click, and listen from four complete series going on. This is the fifth here in Jeremiah, the New Testament is done, but all five of these series are archived going back 38 years at thebibleversebyverse.com, where all you ever need is your Bible, and all you ever have to do is choose, click, and listen. Again, that's at thebibleversebyverse.com. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Jeremiah 31, verse 7. For thus saith the Lord, Sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nations. Publish ye, praise ye, and say the Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. So God has been talking about the restoration of his people after they have been punished for their sin. So here God says, sing about me. Sing about me. I'm, I'm going to bless you. Sing about me. It's good to sing about all the good things that God has done. Good to sing about all the good attributes of God, too. And if you can't sing like I can't sing, you can always praise him for all those things. But I can tell you this, songs that are biblically accurate, like the old hymns, which are my favorite, are a good way to learn about God. I mean, those old hymn writers, they were like theologians. You could tell by the words that they use that their walk with the Lord is so close and their theology so on target. When you sing those old hymns, you're learning about God because they're so biblically sound. And songs that are biblically biblically accurate are a good way to learn about God and a good way to remember God as well as worship Him. So God encourages us to sing songs that talk about Him in an accurate way. Verse 8. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth and with them the blind and the lame. The woman with child and her great company shall return here. The hurting and the needy and those who have special needs are specifically mentioned by God here. We know that God has a heart for people like that. And we know that they are welcomed into the kingdom of God, those who have a heart for God. And God doesn't care how much you have or don't have. That means nothing to him. But it's the needy who often turn to God because their, so- their heart has been softened by the trouble that they have experienced in this life. The Bible says, whosoever will may come. So he's not opposed to anybody coming. It is sad and it is disgusting, quite frankly. And it is horribly sinful that the Word of Faith preachers targets these same people that God mentioned and that God shows care for and concerned for because they are hurting. The word of faith preachers target them because they are the most vulnerable and they are the most desperate and they are the most likely to send money for something that they falsely have been falsely promised by those word of faith liars. But they prey on the vulnerable and the desperate. Those are the ones that God cares so much for because they are vulnerable 
and they are desperate. Verse 9. They shall come with weeping and with supplications. Will I lead them? I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. This refers to tears of joy and not tears of sorrow from being judged. Tears of joy oftentimes accompany sinners who return to Christ because they know that they are forgiven. They know that God has shown them mercy and that if they were to die, despite their unworthiness, they would be in heaven. Verse 10. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the coast afar off, and say, He who scattered Israel will gather them, will gather him, and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. The whole world needs to hear the word of God. Even the furthest corners of the earth need to hear it. It needs to be that way, still needs to be that way. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Because Jesus is the only way that people are going to be saved from hell. And we know from the book of Jeremiah that God punishes rebels who refuse to change. But God also welcomes all repenting sinners from all areas of the entire world. That's why he said take the gospel to every area of the entire world. He doesn't care. Just anybody who, want, anybody who will repent can be saved. Anybody who turns to Christ can be saved. <clears throat> Verse 11, For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob, again, that's speaking of the nation Israel, and ransomed him from the hand of him who was stronger than he, namely Babylon, God says, I have rescued my people from the hands of those that were stronger than my people. God then says, I've taken care of their enemies. And I'm bringing my people home. And we see that God does, we see that God does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Sinners cannot defeat sin. And even Christians cannot defeat sin, at least not by themselves. And sin is the enemy. Sinners cannot defeat sin, and they cannot defeat sin's penalty by their own strength. They try in a myriad of ways. They try, but they can't defeat sin or the penalty, not by their own strength. But any sinner who repents of their sin turns away from their sin in their heart and turns at the same time to Jesus Christ and receives him as Lord and Savior is going to find that Jesus will defeat sin, not just the penalty, which is hell, but he will defeat sin in their day-to-day -day lives as they walk with him. It is possible. They won't go to hell. And Jesus will give them victory over sin if they continue to draw close to him in this life. 12. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion and shall flow together in the goodness of the Lord for grain and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and of the herd and their soul shall be like a watered garden, and they shall not sorrow any more at all. <clears throat> and this is really a wonderful promise from God, isn't it? There are going to be a lot of happy faces when Almighty God flexes his muscles and takes care of sinners who have not repented, gets them out of the way permanently, there's going to be a lot of happy faces after Judgment Day on the new earth that Jesus creates when we who belong to Jesus will see the goodness of God and see the wonderful new earth. It's going to make us so happy to be in our physical bodies that we'll never get sick, never feel pain, never grow old, 
never even get tired. It's going to be a lot of happy faces throughout eternity because of what Jesus has done for us. Just like there were a lot of happy faces when God brought his people back from captivity in Babylon. And that's nothing compared to what we are going to experience in the future as Christians. It's going to be remarkable. Verse 13, Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together, for I will turn their mourning into joy and will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrow. And I will fill to the full the soul of the priest with fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says the Lord. <clears throat> Everything is going to be turned around, so everyone will have a lot of good reasons to be happy on the day that Jesus makes the new heavens and the new earth. Just like everybody had a lot of good reasons to be happy when they were brought home from captivity in Babylon. But notice again verse 14, and I will, God says, I will fill to the full the soul of the priest with fatness and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, saith the Lord. There's nothing better than to be happy and content with the goodness of God. And if you are not, you can be. But you need to straighten out your thinking and your priorities. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. So if you ever decide that you're going to look for your satisfaction and your joy in Jesus Christ instead of in entertainment and instead of the things of this world, then you're going to catch a glimpse of that goodness that God talks about. Taste and see that the Lord is good, and you want more and more and more and more. You're going to know that everything else that the world has to offer is so far down below the goodness that you experience with God when you fellowship with him that it doesn't even register on the scale, and it's going to just amaze you why there are so many lukewarm, worldly Christians. Why are they wasting their life? They're either unsaved, and that's why they don't give a rip about God, and they care more about being like the world than being the way Jesus wants them to be. They're either unsaved and they're just playing a stupid game of Christianity, or they're, for whatever reason, lukewarm Christians and, and still enamored with the world, and I don't get it. And if you're close to Jesus, you don't get it either because why would you why would you forsake the fountain of living water for filthy, vile, broken cisterns of stale, stagnant water, muck and mud and bugs and scum, and you drink that? If somebody's gonna offer me a T bone steak, give me a choice, a T bone steak or a ring of bologna, I'm taking the T-bone steak. And if somebody's going to offer me, and God does, fellowship with him or the things of this world, because you can't have both. You can't be in fellowship with the world and be enamored with the world and still enjoy God the way he wants you to. And if I've got that choice, and I do, and so do you as a Christian, you're out of your, you're, you're out of your ever-loving mind to choose the world. Study God's word with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible, going on five, verse by verse. To be a part of Scripture verse by verse, very easy, very simple. Pray for me right now while you're thinking about it. Pray for me right now. Write a note reminding you to pray for me again and God's Word. And when you take a break from studying, go to the front page, click the donate button, prayerfully give as the Lord may lead because that also makes you a part of this ministry. See you next time.